first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and (coughs) scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, (coughs) says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Our second reading comes from the book of Ephesians. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, You who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord.
Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> a man by the name of James Adams tells a story about uh, how he would always ask his mo mother, Mom, why do you always go to church on Sunday? He, he knew from previous conversations that, you know, she didn't think all that much about the sermons, and the music didn't seem to be all that inspiring. So he says, what do you get out of it? And finally, after the umpteenth time, she got a little defensive, and she said, I don't know. It's just that after I go to church on Sunday, my next week just seems to be a whole lot better. Well, Mr. Adams finally figured out that perhaps one of the things that his mother did get out of coming to church was a time of rest. This was an hour in which she didn't have to be the loving mom, the dutiful wife, the responsible neighbor. She didn't have to lead anything. There was somebody else doing that. She could just come and rest in the gracious and loving arms of her Savior, Jesus Christ. It was a moment when she could give it a rest, give herself a rest. Yeah. I think uh, Jesus really understood that very well. As in our gospel lesson, he says, to his disciples, after they've returned from this mission of healing and teaching, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest for a while. And so today I wanted to share with you some of the difficulties, some of the challenges we might have about acknowledging and, and, and doing what our Lord is asking us to do, to rest. What, what, is there some kind of a challenge to that? But also, the kind of rest that our Lord might be inviting us 
to enjoy. And then thirdly, how life and even our work can change because we follow our Lord's admonition to just give it a rest. Give yourselves a rest. Yeah. Well, first of all, is it hard for us to rest sometimes? And I think it is because there's always something to do. In our gospel as it says the people were coming and going and the disciples had no leisure time even to eat huh? it was always something that needed to be done and that's true in our lives as well you know there was a study done in 1960 in which uh, the researchers were trying to discover the relationship between work and technology and they said with the growing advances in technology why there will come a day when we don't have to work as many hours in a week or we won't have to work as many weeks in a year, or, or we're going to have to retire early. And they said in 20 years, the, the biggest challenge for us will be to find out what we're going to do with all of our spare time. Do you have that problem? Is anyone here that wondering what to do with all of your spare time? Huh? I, I recently retired. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, June 30th was my last day of uh, uh, full-time service at a church and people told me oh you'll be just as busy after you retire as you were when you were working full-time yeah. there's always something to do you'll always be having to discipline yourself to say no yeah. and I've discovered that's true as a matter of fact if someone were to ask me well how is retirement going I'll say to them when does it start it's just the way life is. It's, there's always something to do, always some reason for us not to rest. Sometimes it's because of uh, interruptions. You know, the disciples, they were off to their place of rest, off to that deserted place at a boat. And sure enough, the crowd follows them along the shoreline, lands to, to that deserted place before the disciples get there. So by the time the disciples land the boat, it's no longer a deserted place, but, <clears throat> but it's filled with thousands of people. As a matter of fact, you may have noticed in our gospel lesson that it came in two different sections, spread apart by some verses. The verses that are missing, there's the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Those are the people that have gone along that shore and reached that, quote, deserted place before Jesus. Those 5,000 plus people that Jesus ended up feeling. And, he, feeding, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, it says. Yeah. There's always some interruption to our plans for rest. Some years ago at another parish, I was an uh, on-call chaplain at the local hospital in you know, the normal chaplain worked eight to five, five days a week, and then there was always the evening hours, and then there was the weekend, of course, when there was no chaplain service. So a group of us gathered together, and we decided to provide that service, and we served at night and served on weekends, and we did it on a rotational kind of a basis, you know. And it was always only for emergencies. And one day, it was actually Christmas Day. Uh, I was about to sit down with my family, to open our presents. We just had a full season of Christmas activities, and lo and behold, my pager went off, and I had to go to the hospital for what was indeed an emergency. Yeah, it was a little baby, two and a half weeks old, that had died from SIDS. And I ministered not only to the family and gave them what comfort I could, but also the hospital staff, these seasoned veterans of trauma. They were shook it, shaken up by this incident as well, and so I ministered to them. And then went back to my family, and we opened our gifts. There always seems to be some kind of an interruption to our quest for rest, isn't there? And yet, we still need that rest. And Jesus himself needed it. As after he's fed the 5,000, after he dismisses the crowd and sends his disciples off in a boat to cross Lake Galilee to, a, to Gennesaret, it says he goes up onto a mountaintop to pray. Even the Son of God needed to rest in the comfort, the nourishment, the encouragement, the love of his heavenly Father. Even Jesus 
needed to rest. And furthermore, what kind of rest does Jesus himself give us as he took our sins upon himself on the cross? He died so that we don't have to. He took those sins so that we could have eternal rest. That is how important it is to find, despite all the interruptions, those moments of rest. What kind of rest? Well, it can come in many forms, as I was sharing with the children. But one of those forms, I think, is the discovery of kind of the rhythm of life, the rhythm that God has created into the very fabric of life. In his book, uh, The Way of All Flesh, Samuel Butler tells of a young seminarian who is uh, suffering a nervous breakdown. He's already so stressed out, uh, he, he can't go on. And he goes to his doctor, and his doctor gives him a rather odd prescription. His doctor tells him to go to the zoo. Go to the zoo every day and watch the elephants. Do it for 10 days. And the boy thinks it's a rather odd prescription, but he says, well, I'll do that. Sure, I can do that. And he goes to the zoo, and he watches these pachyderms pad back and forth. This is, this is how they stand. They just move to this rhythm of back and forth. And after a few days of being in that rhythm, he starts to get a little calmer. His stress starts to go away. Because he realizes that's what life is like in God. You know, there's, there's work and there's rest. There's teaching for the disciples, they taught, didn't they? But Jesus always took them aside to be learners, too. And he taught them the, what the parables mean. So there was teaching and learning. Yeah. There was giving care, but there was also receiving care. There's forgiving, and then there's being forgiven. Think of that pattern. Learn, teach, and learn. Give and receive. Forgive and be forgiven. Is that a kind of a rest into which Jesus invites us to come? If we do, it might change our perspective on life, at least in one way or two. Uh, change our perspective on our work. You know, Jesus does send his disciples back into the work field. They go across to that lake of Galilee, land at, land at Gadazeret, and what do they do? They start a ministry all over again. They're healing and they're teaching all over again. Yeah. And Jesus says in our gospel lesson, I want you to come away and rest for a while. Not forever, just for a while. And he sends them back. Maybe with a different perspective on what their work really means. Someone once said there's two ways that we can view our tasks in life. We can view them as a job, or we can view them as a ministry. If you're doing something because nobody else will, it's probably a job. But if you're doing it because you feel you're serving the Lord, it's more likely a ministry. If you just put into, into it it's just enough to get by, it's probably a job. But if you put into it all of your heart and soul and mind, all of your effort, it's more likely a ministry. If all you're interested in is success, it's probably a job. But if you're trying for faithfulness, that's a ministry, isn't it? And with this kind of rest, how we can reflect upon
to walk doth make within the path of righteousness e'en for his own name's sake within the path of righteousness e'en for his own name's sake Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered by the Holy Spirit and fed by the Word, we come together as the people of God to pray for the Church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, give hope to your church around the world. Nurture it with the shepherd's care so that all will remember your faithfulness and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Restore the earth to the goodness you provided at creation. Protect and renew the quiet places of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Break down walls and hostilities that divide people and nations. Teach us to be neighbors to each other instead of strangers and aliens. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. Touch with your healing grace all who are sick, anxious, or fearful. We especially pray for John Burke, Karen Gullett, Dustin Jones, Frank Kimsey, Jim Lampy, Scotty Inman, Alan Malcolm, Katie Mayberry, Sherry Palermo, John Reynolds, Shonda Ryan, Chris Snyder, Wayne Spruley, Ann Wilbur, and those that we now name before you. You keep your love for us forever. We offer our prayers of thanksgiving, especially for our youth who had a great week at camp and for our older youth at the youth gathering in Detroit, Michigan. You have promised that you will not take your love from your people. Let those who have died rest in your love. We pray that you comfort those who mourn, especially Anne Held, mother of Mick Freeberg, who passed away this, this past week, and for the family and friends of Kendall Bills. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bring calm to those who are troubled because of frantic schedules and lack of leisure. Make this assembly a place of rest and refreshment. Lord, in your mercy. 
Into your loving hands, loving God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the grace of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. God of grace, mercy of grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Holy Father through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection has opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so were the church on earth and the hosts of heaven 
We praise your name and join their unending hymn. and merciful Lord heaven and earth are full of your glory in great love you sent to us Jesus your son who reached out to heal the sick and suffering who preached good news to the poor and who on the cross opened his arms to all in the night in which he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. And pour upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, uniting the wills of all those who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
Please let us stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. Wise and generous God, we thank you that at this holy table you have fed us again with the food of everlasting life. Send us with your blessing to seek the good of our neighbor and call others to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I would just ask you, are there any announcements from the congregation that you would like to lift up at this time? Okay. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us. Thanks be to God.
Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> there you go, thank you.